I don't know how to approach this because this is an overview of Eritrean writing. It runs for centuries and therefore what I'll do is I'll just give the highlights from each particular stage in the development of Eritrean writing uh, up to the present and then from there we will have our conversation. Before we go though, into, into my uh, presentation, though, I want to, uh, because Eritrea is very, is much less known in this part of the country, let me give you a hint of what Eritrea looks like. Nine languages are spoken in Eritrea. Islam and the Christianity have coexisted in that country for over 1,400 years. Christianity came to Eritrea in the fourth century, the big beginning almost of the 1st century to Eritrea and to Ethiopia. Uh, I mean, Christianity came to Eritrea in the 4th century AD. Islam came into, into Eritrea when the Prophet Muhammad himself was alive. So, in the 7th century, mid 7th century AD. And therefore, these two religions have been coexisting for a very, very long time. Plus, Eritrean society is a society of migrations and cross-migrations because of its position along the Red Sea. It's a society of a lot of uh, migrations, cross-migrations, invasions, counter-invasions, and therefore the people of Eritrea are a mixture of many races. It's very easy to find within Eritrea people speaking different languages, living in different parts of the country, professing different religions, but, professing, but swearing to a common ancestor. A collective memory of the kinship relationships in Eritrea is a very, very important underlying current in the uh, cohesion of Eritrean society. So we need to put this in perspective. Why these different religions and different ethnic groups have been coexisting together is because over the years they have developed a way of living together, a way of solving their problems, safety valves in, in, their, in, their, in their fabrics, uh, and a sensitivity and a respect to the rights and, and, and privileges of the different social groups. This is long before colonialism. This is something that has been existing for a very long, long time. So we need to take this into consideration when we talk about it. The history of writing in Eritrea goes as long back as its history itself. Eritrea is a new nation, yes, a new independent state, but it's a very, very old society, as you can see, because Christianity and Islam came uh, very, very early on, much earlier, perhaps, than many of the European countries and so on. So, uh, if you reach 65, these kinds of things happen. You start dropping things in the source of The history of writing in Eritrea started with the coming of, into being of the, of, the, of the society itself. Um, and it has been following the political ups and downs, the military history of the, of the society itself. At the beginning, You know, when Christianity came into, into Eritrea and Ethiopia, the language of Eritrea, of, of the church of, uh, of, 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 of Ethiopia and Eritrea was Gris. And from Gris have come Tigrinya, Tigre, and Amharic. So, writing in Tigrinya, although, writing in Eritrea and Ethiopia, although it's centuries old, was done only in Gris and it was always confined to the Orthodox Church of those countries. So, <coughs> Eritrean languages were not, did not have any access to that kind of writing for a very, very long time. The earliest writings that we find in Tigrinya are in the 16th century. There was a law of a place called Logochua that was written in Tigrinya. And because the written uh, script, the Greek script was a church thing, it was stored in a monastery, which monastery was burned by an, an, the invasion of what is known as the Ahmed Grand invasion in the, 15th, the 16th century. 
and that particular original writing disappeared. People reconstructed it from memory. So that's the earliest writing, as far as I know, that we know in the Tibetan language. Some of my colleagues, uh, writers, people like Maidanesh and Sarawat Zahaye, who are examining these things, have discovered that there were others. The, the following years of uh, where the Tibetan uh, script was, was, was appeared was somewhere in the 17th century, 1630. And this continued for a long time to come. But Tigrinya started to be written only in the 19th century, after uh, the coming of the Italians, and to be published also. So that's by way of, a, of an introduction. But the literary tradition of Eritrea dates back to the beginning of the, tra of the, of the tradition, seems to themselves. The oral history, the oral literature, later on constructed into art forms called the Melkas, in Tigrinya at least, the Melkas, and the, um, even the other one, the Masse. The Melkas is the funeral dirge. The Masse is not praised uh, uh, poetry, but poetry that also criticized and told about things as they happened. They were the most, the, the most ancient, the most, uh, uh, the first historical evidences that we find are in these kinds of Malkas and, 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 and Masse. So, I'll give you some examples of what those Malkas and Masses looked like. This one line that I like very much, very short and very precise but very deep. There was a drought and a famine at some point, and the man loses his mother. But soon afterwards, the rains come, and it's much better now. So he's sitting down, watching a horse galloping around, because there's a lot of grass, and the horse has eaten it. <coughs> and he's sitting down in front of Njara, which is our bread, and uh, mustard, and he snatches a juicy chunk of meat looks at it and says, Hamra first night by Shaydan Gaze, Thomas Gamul, you was it? A Dina Ik at Ali Hazen. Meaning, there goes the Gaze's horse galloping around. Here's a chunk of juicy meat in my, ha in my hands. Mother, come back. I have caught your murderer. The death of the feeling in these three lines is tremendous. It's nothing really of the sort, which, of course, you get lost in translation, but nothing of that kind of, that kind of, an, of an artistic fitness has, has developed ever since. The Italians came to Eritrea in 1890. And when they occupied Eritrea, they thought that they were occupying a place of a no one's land. Because Eritrea did not have a central government by the time the Italians came. The coastal sea, sea, seashores were uh, ruled by the, by, the, by the Turks. The uh, central highlands were intermittently, sometimes controlled, sometimes not, by Ethiopian uh, feudal lords. And in the west, the Egyptians were in control. And therefore, the Italian, when the Italians came, they could not see the kind of underlying web of relationships that I talked about that is, after all, the source of, uh, of uh, cohesion for Eritrea. So what they did was, in a place called Saganetina, Apologia, what they did was they tried to confiscate land for uh, their own settlers to settle. And one of the first oral poetries of resistance that were uttered then, and that became more or less like the battle cry for, for all subsequent anti-colonial struggles was uttered by a man known as the Jazmach Bahata Hagos. He said to his younger brothers when he revolted against the, the, the Italians and he saw that his younger brothers were not up to it. They were hesitating, he said. He 
بعضی از اونو عصب متراسو، تعلیم تمن تنقیسو، دلایل خواهی رکب فروسو، تعداد تمن ده نقیسو، دلایل خواهی رکب فروسو. Meaning, my brother, no matter how kindly I was a, 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 a stranger, no matter how kindly a stranger is no friend, my brother, younger brother, and girl, don't be a fool. My son, your mother, don't be fooled. A trap has been woven around us with its feet in Masawa and its pillow or its head in Asam, the two ports in Eritrea. The bite of a black snake can be healed, but there is no medicine for the bite of a white snake. So this is the first anti-colonial declaration of war cry that was later to become, until the, the days of the revolution was later to become uh, like the battle cry of, of the Republic, something like that. And so on. But as Italian colonialism started to take its grip on the people of Eritrea, we see the anger and the defiance mellowing a little, as it did in the following poem. As then the, law, the Italians go and kill a chief, one chief. They say in his funeral text, they say, Dandalom, Dandalom, how high built, how high kill above Magal Dandalom. The Atukihak and Karaholo, Tarif Kadok and Masasolo, Zongut Alta Yerong, Zongtilitis Tagirum, Night of Radaka, Chabet Tablolo, Nighty, Hainha after Tablolo, Nighted Eat Tower Long, Atu Kazlur Girum, Arat Kazdris and Erlum. Translated it means defender, you defender, our defender. Brother of Haikal. Haikal is a woman. And the heroes are always called by the names of their sisters. Will you come back so we challenge them or, will, or, have, if, or have you fallen? And shall we compromise? It was not the fault of the corporal, nor was it the fault of the lieutenant, because you threatened them with your sword, because you punished them with your eyes, you cocked your gun at them. They connived at destroying you. Now, let those who want your seat take it. These are the collaborators of the Italians who now side with the Italians in, in the elimination of this man. And therefore, you know, there are several examples, but I don't want to worry with it. But these kinds of things then show the mellowing, the domestication more or less of the Italian people under Italian rule. In 1934, one the first novel ever written in Tigrinya was written by Abba Gabriel a priest, a Catholic priest, who writes about the, the conscript. It's called the conscript, and today it's been published in the United States by a friend, a colleague of mine, Grimai Nagash. He, he has translated it into English, it's available in English, and I would urge uh, many of you to, to look at, into it, because this is the first novel, not only in Tigrinya, but probably the first novel in one of the first novels by many of Af uh, African languages. So the conscript is now published. Now here Abad Jesus talks about this conscript who is taken to Libya by the Italians to fight against the Libyans. He goes and fights against the Libyans. And then when he sees all these bodies, all these dead bodies, all this massacre, he stands there and says, what am I doing? He starts to realize that this is after all, he said, after all my brothers, you know, Arabs, Africans, what am I doing here? This is as early as 1934. The Italians didn't allow it to be published. It was only published later on during the federal years. So the Italians, Italian colonialism did not allow any <coughs> education to be any further than the fourth day. Unlike what happened in, in other countries, Kenya and so on, Eritreans were only allowed to go to school up to the fourth grade. And therefore they could not, even if they wanted to develop their native languages. They taught Amharic, I mean, Tigrinya and Arabic in schools without any distinction of the religion and so on. They just taught them in schools, but up to a point. Only enough for them to, to read and write. Italian, mathematics, the four categories, tables, the four something tables, categories, tables. What? 
the four mathematics, mathematical tables, you know, addition, subtraction, and so on. Science, of science, they said hygiene, so that they would be clean when they uh, come near the Italians. And of, it, of, of history, they said they, the, the natives should learn the names of the personalities that made Italy great. This is all that they, that they allowed. They did not allow any political participation, they did not allow any political uh, organization, whatever. But after the uh, reverse of, of, uh, of Bahta Habus, the man I, I told you about earlier, the man who talked about the bite of the, black, the, the white skin, they found out that they could not deal with Eritrea the way they wanted to and serve, and therefore they only imposed a state structure above, like an umbrella above the people, with all the enforcement machineries going down to the level of the masses of the grassroots level, so they could conscript armies, they could conscript labor forces and so on, at will, at will. But they left Eritrean connections, Eritrean customary laws, Eritrean administrative practices in its original form. And therefore, because of this, the ethnic interrelationships, the collective memory of Eritreans about their own relationships stayed intact.